The time has finally come for Vegeta to receive true justice and I am so excited that I honestly thought about turning on the camera for this one just off of how pumped I am right now. While in the main timeline of Dragon Ball Super, Vegeta has pretty much foregone Ultra Instinct altogether, the dynamic between he and Beerus moving forward seems extremely promising with Vegeta much more interested in all of the other sides of godly power now. To me, it just seems kind of like Vegeta season now, and thanks to our friends Jordan Lee and Monty Black, we're pretty much getting what we've all been asking for. While Vegeta in the main timeline now focuses on exploring things like the power of the energy of destruction, in another realm, the very integrity and existence of the Saiyans is threatened once again. This is a new original fan manga taking place post-moral arc by Jordan Lee and Monty Black called Dragon Ball Super Sadala and is the latest installment in their series that began with Dragon Ball Super Jiren vs Broly. After the Jiren vs Broly arc, the next short installment came in the form of a legendary battle between Oob and Majin Buu as Goku went on to strengthen himself as well. While Oob battled Majin Buu in the past thanks to the illusionary effects of the time room, in the outside world Goku battled a clone of himself created by Mr. Popo in order to gain control over his powers to the point where he needn't even transform anymore. This clone being an exact copy of Goku was able to harness all of his abilities and as the battle progressed, the clone did as well using various transformations that already belonged to Goku until eventually, the clone even took on Ultra Instinct. This is apparently what Goku had been hoping for and waiting on as both he and the clone adapted to each other, however if we pay close attention, we notice that throughout the whole battle, Goku never transformed himself. In one final clash, the clone released a limit breaker Kamehameha at the earth but this is when Goku did something absolutely amazing and without even transforming, harnessed his ultra instinct power as well and with graceful movement and power, defeated his clone and achieved his goal. At the same time, in the past, this is when Oob with no other options left and being the only one strong enough to defeat Buu at this moment whose power kept increasing, unlocked Ultra Instinct as well, defeating Majin Buu with a new power all his own. Upon Oob's return from the past, breaking the illusion, Goku is ecstatic at the amount of progress he's made in such a short amount of time but this is when Vegeta who had stepped in previously when Goku was being beaten by his clone, addresses that he didn't show up at the lookout for no reason. Thanks to a warning from Champa, Vegeta was alerted of the Saiyans in Universe 6 being in some type of danger but what kind of danger he didn't necessarily say at the time as he was just returning the favor from the Tournament of Power. That isn't all however as with Goku having a relationship with the Universe 6 Saiyans as well, there is no way he wouldn't have tagged along had Vegeta not come here specifically to ask him to stay out of it. Goku agrees although he suspects things may be a bit more dangerous than Vegeta knows right now but nonetheless he respects his decision and returns to his training with Oob as the two get ready to tackle the hyperbolic time chamber. This is Dragon Ball Super Sadala guys and with Vegeta headed directly to Universe 6 and Planet Sadala, a new threat to the Saiyan race that was thought to have long since died out, rises again. If you guys are excited for a Vegeta arc and want to check out this story for yourselves, the links to both Jordan and Monty's Twitter will be down below so be sure to go check them both out and show a ton of love to the homies. Don't forget to turn on those notifications as well to never miss an upload as soon as they go live and if you guys haven't already consider leaving a like on this video as well it really helps out a ton. Be sure to follow on both Twitch and Twitter to stay up with me and all anime related content guys but without further ado. As we arrive in the sector of the Saiyans in Universe 6, the first place we're taken to is a planet called Arlia. A veteran Saiyan is seen gasping for breath as he attempts to get back to his feet. When he does regain himself however and looks around, he notices a gruesome scene made up of a pile of bodies nearby. All of a sudden, something startles him as a pair of glowing eyes appear behind him. You space pirates are the scum of the universe, the Saiyan says as he turns around to face the ones who did this. We Saiyans made it this far as a species because we are willing to die for our cause. You will never be able to replicate that. That's great to hear, the voice says nonchalantly. All of a sudden, a beam is fired that pierces straight through the Saiyan's armor, 
collapsing him on the floor leaving him lifeless before his opponents. So this is their most experienced warrior, the being in the shadow says, as his partner now steps into the picture as well. What a joke. This Saiyan sort of resembles the Saiyan from God to the second being says, but he's too old. In fact, he sort of resembles one of the Saiyans from the seventh universe as well. Those Saiyans could activate a transformation that multiplied their power to amazing heights though, she goes on. This definitely isn't one of them. Interesting, the first being says, and as they both step out of the shadows, we can see that the ones who are terrorizing the Saiyans here are none other than the Tuffle survivors Orin and Kamen. What's this, Kamen says, holding up a strange device. Looks like it's used to call for help, maybe. <clears throat> Looks like he did have backup, Orin says, as he looks to the skies and sees a ship passing by. Maybe this one can transform, he says. Activate the distress signal. Neither of them have really been impressed by those they've defeated so far. Although their motives are unclear at the moment, maybe this saying will provide them with whatever it is that they're looking for. Man, he's taking forever, the young Saiyan says on board the ship as he coasts through the skies. There may have only been two targets, but that still means that he was outnumbered, his companion on the scanner says. Alpha doesn't mind though, the young Saiyan says, referring to the older one that we saw previously whose name we now learn is Alpha. He thinks I just get in his way anyways, and besides, I still get the credit even if I just show up at the last minute, so it's kind of a win-win. Maybe you wouldn't be a burden if you participated more, his partner says from the scanner. This is when alarms within the ship begin to go haywire as Alpha's distress signal has been activated, calling for help to the area he was just battling in. Seriously, the young Saiyan says, freaking out? If Alpha's in trouble, there's probably not much I can do. Darn it. I better head down. As the ship lands on planet Arlia, as soon as the young Saiyan steps off the ship, he's subjected to the horror of his fallen comrade Alpha who had been lying in the middle of the battlefield. Wait, Alpha, he says, but before he can process anything, Orin and Kamen appear behind him. Some backup you were, Orin says, taunting the young Saiyan who showed up late. I really truly hope that these two aren't the best the mighty Saiyan race has to offer, Orin says. To which Kamen replies, yeah, what a letdown. The young Saiyan charges at the two Tuffles, but they easily defeat him, crushing his throat between two attacks and sending him crashing into the ground as though he were nothing. He begs for them to spare his life as they close in on him, smiling menacingly as he may have just had a stroke of luck if he's useful. This is when we finally arrive on planet Sadala, the home of the Saiyan race in Universe 6 as we're taken straight to the throne. Today is a dark day, the king says. My mentor, uncle, our greatest royal training officer has been killed by two surviving Tuffles. As you know, King Sadala says, he rejected the throne in order to fight on the front lines of the Sadala Defense Force. Alpha was the embodiment of what we as Saiyans believe in, what we strive for, and what we strive to be, the king says. Without him, I wouldn't be the proud warrior I am today. Fortunately, Alpha's longtime partner, Skirit, defeated those responsible for his death. We gather here today to reward him with a medal for his heroic act. We have also gathered here because Skirit has grave news, he continues, and vital information. The Tuffles who were thought to have destroyed themselves in a civil war have returned, and more powerful than ever somehow. They have plans for galactic conquest, and two have been reported traveling the galaxy and leveling civilizations as rogue space pirates, he says. But according to Skirit, there are more survivors. This is when we see Skirit, who was previously on his deathbed before the Tuffles, thanking King Sadala for his time as he explains what he knows. The Tuffle race, he says, as we know, has been expanding their territory, taking over nature reserve planets and harvesting them for energy and developing their tech until they were a modern society. They would then open a planet up to the richest and most fortunate in the universe. We have intel that can be used to stop them for good. I received info on their next target, he goes on, our allies, the Gardenians. Their planet is the biggest nature reserve in the universe and as such, is home to precious resources vital to the Tuffles efforts. I've set up a meeting with the King of the Gardenians, King Sadala says, to discuss setting up a stronghold on their planet in preparation for the invasion. I will be accompanied by Skirit and my elite guards, he says, but in the meantime, Kaba, he 
says as we then cut to Universe 6's very own Super Saiyan. You, Kaba, you will be in charge of training our forces in preparation for the invasion. But sir, I should be going with you, Kaba says looking up from his kneeling position. The king rejects this however as he tells Kaba that he is the only Super Saiyan amongst their ranks. You will teach our army to become Super Saiyans as well, he says. Skirit thinks that's the best way to prepare, and I agree. This is when Kaba mentions that he's tried this before, and everyone always comes so close, but they need a trigger, he says. The only person who easily learned how to become a Super Saiyan was Khalifla. Yes, Khalifla, and the demonic Saiyan of legend, the king says, rising from his throne and heading towards the ship. They would definitely come in handy. Your relationship with them has served us well. In fact, history may have repeated itself without it. Tensions were never higher before then. A war against the demonic Saiyan has been prevented and possibly the planet's destruction thanks to the Tournament of Power. Kaba, he says, you have my permission to do whatever it takes to push the defense force to the next level. Understood, Kaba replies as the King and Skirit board the ship and take their leave. I know who we need, Kaba thinks to himself. Lord Champa said he owed my master a favor. I bet he can bring him here. Aboard the ship, as King Sadala and Skirit approach the planet inhabited by the Gardenians, the King mentions that it works out great that the Gardenians want to hire the Saiyans to protect them, as the Tuffles are a major threat to them as well. Yes, they are definitely a major threat, Skirit says in a slightly suspicious manner, but the King ignores it. At any rate, the King continues, the Gardenians are a major ally. We must do everything we can to protect them as well. All of a sudden, one of the pilots of the ship alerts the king that a Tuffle ship is rapidly approaching them. This isn't good, the king thinks to himself. The Tuffles have now even modified themselves to withstand the vacuum of space. We need to outrun them. The two ships take off through the vacuum of space in a high speed chase now, but even with the Tuffle menace closing in on the king, when we cut back to planet Sadala, Vegeta has finally arrived as he overlooks the city, saying he arrived much faster than expected. As he descends into the city, Vegeta is immediately met by troops from the defense force, demanding to know exactly who he is. Looks like one of Khalifa's crew, one of the guys says, with another replying that Khalifa is scary but her goons are a joke. You have 10 seconds to get back to your territory, one of the guys says, which kind of piques Vegeta's interest as he tells them to make him leave if that's the case. The Saiyans attack Vegeta in full force but are easily put in their place, sent flying across the city one by one as Vegeta isn't the least bit impressed. What complete chumps, he scoffs. But this is when more reinforcements show up out of nowhere, charging at Vegeta from all angles as he stands in the middle of the road but as they close in, Vegeta transforms in the center of the city scattering them all over the place. With all of the Saiyans dealt with now, Vegeta can continue making his way to the kingdom. I sincerely hope you weaklings aren't the elite of the great Sadala Defense Force, Vegeta says, now in its Super Saiyan form. As he looks around, the commotion he made has alerted none other than Kaba as he appears on top of the building to see none other than Vegeta beating up his army. Master? Kaba says shocked, as it's almost as if Vegeta himself had heard his cry for help. Vegeta looks up to his beloved pupil and lets off a warm smile, almost insinuating that he's here now so there's nothing to worry about. However, will Vegeta and Kabe really be able to handle the Tuffle Menace all by themselves? Or will Kabe need a breakthrough of his own to not be a burden on Vegeta in the case of a deadly final battle?